All right, guys, what's up? Nadia and I are together this week, so we wanted to continue her contest prep series and just really kind of go into as much detail as we can for you, not only about what she's doing uh, and the reason why she's doing what she's doing, but also so you guys can take the variables that we're considering and possibly apply them to yourself. So I'm gonna let her go into this week in terms of where she's at. And then uh, I wanna talk about a big like kind of situation happened this week where we kind of hit a stalling point. And I want to talk about how I kind of navigated that and, and the reason why I navigated that the way that I did. And then we're going to do a segment also on cardio, um, specifically to Nadia and Nadia's prep, but then I want to make it more general as well and talking about just cardio considerations in general, um, modes of cardio, heart rate, what I look for in that, what you guys should be looking for in that, what's ultimately most important. Um, how to improve recovery through cardio, through different modes of cardio. So I think you guys are gonna enjoy that a lot. That's a question I get often, not only through my social media, but also when I start with a new athlete, they ask me, hey, why are you having me do cardio this way? So I kinda wanna go into that and just explain in more detail about you know why or my thought process into that. So let's start off with Nadia and where she's at this week, and then we'll go from there. So I guess I'll start off where we left last week's episode at. Uh, right after Labor Day, so Tuesday I was 135.6 and I take notes of my weight, my wake up time, um, because as I mentioned, all those variables kind of play an effect of how I'm looking, how I'm weighing in, how my check-ins are. Um, so 135.6 last week on Tuesday, that was about 10 and a half weeks out. Now nine and a half weeks out today, um, I'm 133.6, but we had some kind of hiccups during the week. Um, not necessarily hiccups, but just places I was sticking um, Stress wasn't an issue, it was more so, I think, a recovery standpoint, uh, managing fatigue, managing recovery, and just making sure that my sleep schedule was also um, under control and that I was getting enough hours of sleep because that also plays an impact in how I'm looking, how I'm feeling, what my weight reads on the scale the next morning, and so on. Um, and then, so Tuesday, I had, I had a pretty good week. Um, I know a few weeks ago I had mentioned that my recovery was a little bit off. I felt that I was just heavy and tired and um, having having drops after my rest days, so I was obviously in dire need of that. Um, but Friday, after having a pretty solid week of good sleep, awesome sessions, some rest in between, uh, Friday I was up to 136.2 again at 5 a.m. So that day we did another high day. Let's talk about that really quick. Mm -hmm. Something that is a little bit different, I, I feel like a lot of the people that I work with, um, they're fortunate, or I don't even want to say fortunate, but they don't have to wake up early, like super early. Whereas with Nadia, that's a variable that we have to consider with her. And within considering that, like I don't hold as much weight because I, I found through myself and through a lot of people, it seems like the last two hours that you sleep, if you're able to go through like a natural sleep cycle, that's when you kind of flush a lot of that weight. Mm -hmm. So she always has to wake up early. She always has to wake up to an alarm typically. And with that being said, I don't necessarily gauge her weigh-ins as heavily as I would others if they were waking up naturally. So really with her, what I try to gauge as best as I can is like the trend in 10 to seven days. Um, and I just wanna make sure that trend is, is going on because the trends are gonna show the direction that you're heading. If you're having to wake up at 4.30, like for example, I think she even had to wake up earlier on Saturday than normal because she needed to get her workout in before work. Um, so when, when things like that are going on, I have to kind of look at the big picture rather than just like that variable, that exact weigh in at that time, because it's not always something that you can really hold in full regard in terms of like where her actual progress is. So now she's gonna go into the weigh-ins over the weekend and then I'll kind of explain my process through that. Yeah, totally. So Friday, we did a high day. Um, and then I woke up Saturday morning early to get in my cardio, get in my training before working that day. I woke up heavier Saturday, um, but also taking into account my early wake up time. So like he mentioned, those last two, three hours of sleep, especially for me, are absolutely crucial in how I'm feeling, how I'm looking. Um, usually if I could, like the difference between how I look and how I feel and my weight even, almost all the time between waking up at 4 a.m. versus waking up at 7 or 8 a.m., is at least like a pound and um, just a world of a difference in how I'm feeling. So we did a full high day again Saturday um, and that was all after I had trained as well. Um, so I, I trained fasted that morning actually and ended up having all my food the rest of the day. Um, was up pretty late Saturday night celebrating a friend's birthday and um, 
and didn't actually get to bed until 2 a.m. Saturday night. So I was up for a very long time. Um, I managed that fine though. Um, really wasn't an issue. I felt fine the next morning waking up at, um, I believe I woke up, I know I have it written down. I think it was 7.30. Or maybe seven, 730. 7.30. 7.30. On Sunday. Yeah, 7.30 on Sunday. Boom. And was lower than I was even the previous Tuesday. Um, so I went from 135 that Tuesday before to up to 136.2, up to 136.6. And then even after a long night um, or long day and a short night of sleep, even just sleeping in till... 7 30 in the morning was helpful for me and I woke up a bit lighter and I felt great um, I felt great Saturday even though I was up for a while and I felt better Sunday after having that rest um, Monday morning however I felt tired I felt a little bit beat I feel like that lack of sleep had caught up to me um, and I looked it it just reflected in my check-ins as well I just looked watery and softer and just a bit swollen everywhere honestly and it was um not necessarily discouraging because i knew exactly why and i think a lot of people beat themselves up too much over check-ins when they know the variables at hand have been off a bit for example my sleep um how much i was up awake, awake and walking around um and then just the fact that um I hadn't had a whole lot of rest between being up early working out the same day being up super late and so on. So then I I didn't, like I said, I didn't feel too bad about my check-ins. We knew that it was uh, something that was in my control to be fixed, obviously. Um, and we since added 20 minutes of cardio post training on the bike specifically. So. All right, so I'm gonna kind of backtrack. So Friday morning, um, Nadia checked in with me and I got her update and I could sense like a little bit of frustration in terms of I think anybody it's it's very very natural when you're going through a prep like you really hold a lot of your day's outcome or, or how your day is going to start based off of what the scale tells you in the morning so she was frustrated because i think if i believe correctly she was like 136.6 on friday or somewhere right around there which was the same exact weight she was the previous friday so going through this prep this whole time i've been really, like really coaching her up on okay like all that matters is your trends well, this is the first time that her trend wasn't trending in the right direction. So when I'm coaching somebody, um, it's really important that I navigate things in terms of addressing the overall plan and looking at the overall plan, not too quickly just throwing the towel on the plan and then also like her confidence. Um, so if, if you fed somebody up to this point in which we have, we went from one refeed to two refeeds uh, a week one week we did uh, like a half day just to kind of see if, if we got a different response out of that. But basically this whole prep, it's been trending in starting refeeds, increasing refeeds, and that's been a part of her cycle. So obviously too, there's like an emotional attachment to her or with her to Fridays because she knows as long as she's making progress that she's gonna get to eat more food, which is, there's a benefit there. There's a psychological benefit there. There's a performance benefit there. All that's included. So when we came to Friday morning and she didn't make that progress, I didn't want to like drill her right away and be like, okay, no refeed because up to that point, that plan has shown worthy that it's going to work. So with just one outlier of one weigh in that wasn't on the mark with what we were consistent with, I didn't want to just completely just remove that plan. So I just said, Hey, look, I'm going to go with my gut here. We're going to continue, even though your weight's the same, I'm always going to go with feeding you up first before I pull more food. So we did that. And then I think you sent me pictures on Saturday morning. Yeah, I did. Mm -hmm. And even though she was up super early, like I could see a positive difference in the look. Um, so I said, you know, and, and then I also knew that she got up early and she was going to be up late. So within that being said, that's why I said, go ahead and refeed. And, I, and I'm basically, I'm, I'm giving her this instruction based off of all the data that we've calculated to this point. So it wasn't so much on what was happening Friday and Saturday. It was more so in trusting in the process of what we've done so far. And that's really what I want to encourage you guys with is like not being so fixated and not letting your day be dictated by what the scale says in the morning, but the overall process of what you're doing is so, so important. Um, and then also at the first sign of lack of progress to not overly, you know, use a lack of patience and shoot yourself in the yeah. foot and make changes. So again, we rolled, we rolled with the consistent plan. And then this morning, 
you know, she's the lowest that she's been so far, you know, so she was at 136.6 on Friday. This morning, she's at 133.6. Um, so within that, it's like, I just want to really encourage you that, you know, whether you're a coach, whether you're an athlete yourself, I would encourage you to basically over trust in your plan until it really proves that it's no longer working before you make changes. Because if you make changes every time you don't get the result that you want, you're, you're going to run out of variables to play with at some point. Um, and me, I, like I said, I would always err on the side of overfeeding somebody rather than pulling more food. And then I want to get into the next point, which was, um, so you guys might be saying, okay, well, why did you give her more food, but then add more cardio? So going back to last week's update, we pulled back on the hit cardio. So hit cardio has a long-term effect in terms of the metabolic effect, fat burning effect. So when we pull that back, the reason why we pulled that back is to further elicit recovery. But basically what I'm trying to do now is match the hit and get the, the cardio from steady state to, to match the hit in terms of just overall output, energy expenditure, things of that nature. But within that, help facilitate better recovery. So that's why I just add a little bit more. And then also too, like um, in my mind, Nadia is winning nationals. So I want her to be ahead. Um, so if, if we can just, you know, tweak something like really small like that and then make the result that we want to keep her ahead, that's what I'm going to do. Um, anything else before we just jump into just cardio in general? For the this bike week? specifically. Okay. Yeah. So, and this is kind of, kind of transition topics. Like I said, I want to do an overall topic on just cardio, um, cardio for me more than anything else. And this is, this is hard because I've been there as a prep athlete. Um, cardio is all about heart rate response. Okay. And typically, you know, your work level that you're at within that heart rate response, that's what matters most. Um, you can do that so many ways, you know, so don't get so fixated on what type of cardio you're doing. And, and it's hard. Like there's so many competitors that have this emotional attachment to the stairs and whether that's because the stairs made them work harder whether it's because they won when they were using the stairs, whether it's because that's what they saw their favorite competitor doing. Um, but there's also a component to the stairs of hindering or limiting the ability to recover. So I'm fine with my athletes using the stairs, but there's going to come a point in prep where we need to navigate things really smart and we might need to push the energy expenditure up, but I don't want to do that at the cost of also hindering recovery. So when I added this cardio for her, um, I really don't care so much what she's doing in the morning because that's kind of a constant variable right now. But since we added more, I wanted to further facilitate or at least not hinder the recovery aspect of that. So that's why I put it on the bike. And the bike for me, and if you look at the research on a bike, the bike has no eccentric loading. So there's no pounding on the joints. The eccentric part is when uh, the muscle is being shortened. So I'm sorry, muscles being lengthened. So within that, if you're looking at like a, a treadmill or um, stairs or anything like that, there's a lot of eccentric loading that's happening. Um, so within that being said, if you're not properly like looking at how much recovery is being hindered by the cardio that you're doing, that could hurt the process long term. So that's kind of my thought process into why to use the bike or when to implement the bike. Because again, like you can work extremely hard on a bike. Um, but your recovery abilities on that bike are going to be a lot better long term than if you're doing something that's pounding your joints, eccentric loading over and over again. So that's kind of my thought process into that. Yeah, exactly. The stairs, I, I was so familiar with the stairs for so long. Um, and everything that was an effect of the constant pounding and um, just the recovery aspect of the stairs, I was just so used to it and so familiar with it for it, of it because I was doing it for so long. Um, but specifically I had a lot of IT band and hip issues and just recurring things that I couldn't get away from that just kept showing up and showing up because I kept showing up on the stairs. Um, I never had much trust in any other form of cardio because the stairs was really all that I knew to do. Uh, because like Matt had mentioned, my heart rate was always the highest. I felt as I was working the hardest and if I could do steady state cardio on the stairs versus on the treadmill when my heart rate is less, I'm burning less calories on the treadmill than I am on the stairs during a, a 30 minute session, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do the harder option where I'm burning more because in my head, that's what's going to get me closer. That's what is going to help me more. 
Um, but specifically in the morning, I have been keeping that variable the same of sticking with the treadmill um, and incline walking for my cardio. I walk um, using, we have those Precore, are they Precore is the brand of the treadmill? Yeah. Um, the incline's are about 10 and the speed is 3.3. And I've been, um, I learned that I need to stretch my calves before and after really well because I was experiencing some pain from that just because it wasn't something I was very used to. Um, but since I've really, really started to enjoy just walking on the treadmill and it's not um, an easy walk by any means, I'm not holding on. Um, if you're holding on your treadmill, you might as well just put your incline back down because it really does you a disservice to be holding on to the top of that thing while you're doing your cardio. Uh, the inclines there for a reason um and then the bike i really enjoyed too just because i didn't feel any kind of hard impact there was nothing hurting or aching and i felt as if i was able to get a good stretch and good blood flow and um, move all that lactic acid that i have sitting in my legs after like a training session for example just moving that around and um, i think it'll help actually keep inflammation down for a little bit um, just by getting everything moving and not being so high impact during my cardio yeah two other things that just came to mind is one of the conversations that we had when we first started is like you want to you want to plan out a prep or you want to pl plan out a, a progress phase or whatever you're doing with variables that you can still call on if you need them um so really it's like this thought process in my mind of of getting away with the least amount you can and getting the most out of it and then when the least stops working then you increase it um, so if you start out 16, we 16 weeks out and you're on the stairs and you're going, you know, as hard as you can on the stairs, when that stops working, you, you literally have nothing else to call on. Um, and, and not only that, but cardio response, um, the benefits of cardio, fat loss from cardio, it's not all about going as hard as you can, because if that were the case, we would be doing sprints all the time. We would be doing swimming laps all the time. Like we would be making our cardio as hard as possible. Um, again, it's just a, this mental battle that we we, we That's work such a with. Mind game. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's like we're always like, okay, let's let's push it more. Let's push it more. But if if what's working is continuing to work, like don't push the threshold up anymore, yeah. because then if you stall out four weeks that left to go, like right now, like if we stall, and I think the stalling is from her needing to do more. We have the stairs. We haven't even touched the stairs yet. Um, you know, there's so many things that you can do if you don't just go as hard as you can out of the gates because it might not be necessary. And don't take this as me saying don't work hard. I think the, the working hard really needs to come during the training. Mm -hmm. And then you need to use the cardio to, to enhance the training through not limiting your ability to recover from the cardio method that you're choosing. Because through that cardio, your training can suffer too if you're not smart. For sure, for sure. Um, and then the other point that I had was, I think I kind of just combined the two, mm -hmm. um, about like just not really going like zero to a hundred to start. Um, you know, my prep in 2018, I never got the RPMs on my bike over 90 and I never increased the resistance over eight. And the reason why is because it continued to work. Um, you know, so it's just like sticking again, sticking to the smallest amount of variables that you can ride them till they no longer work. And then when they stop working, this is the other thing I was gonna say, it's not always about doing more either. You know, like, especially for you girls that are listening to this, like y'all's recovery is so finite, which is with, with, with guys, like typically I can just push a guy into the floor and he's gonna continue to respond. And with a girl, you might be able to get away with that short term, but the longer you continue that process, the more your body's gonna fight against you. So at some points of this prep, when Nadia stalls, I'm actually gonna pull her cardio completely out. I'm gonna tell her to rest for a few days. I'm gonna tell her to eat um, within somewhat of a plan because there's more to it than just more output, less intake, more output, less intake. And that, that goes back to the cardio variable as well because again, like cardio is a, is a tool that for me is down the list. It's necessary, but it's down the list. Well, I want performance up as high as we can in terms of training. Um, I want to manipulate the diet as much as we can to get the response that we want and to keep the metabolism where we want. And then cardio is below that for me. Uh, so that's kind of my overall thought process into why we're doing what we're doing in terms of cardio. Um, I'm going to be in town for the next like 10 days. So I'm looking forward to getting some more training in uh, with Nadia and you guys will be able to see that. And then um, anything else like on your week this week? Yeah, we haven't changed. I wanted to make a note that we haven't adjusted my food at all the only adjusting that we're doing to my diet is either 
um, sticking with that first tie day on that Friday and um, either adding a second one, a second full day, a second half day. Um, that's the only dietary changes that we've implemented thus far. My food hasn't really been pulled. It's just been the changes to cardio that we've made. And along with what Matt said, when your body is resisting or just fighting the plan, um, adding more for it to resist to isn't going to make it succumb to what you're asking it to do. Um, I, I really think that it's important to have that fine balance between knowing when to listen to your body and accept that um, it might be time to put your foot on the gas a little bit and then also recognizing, recognizing when um, to kind of respect what it's telling you and work with it, not against it so much because it's only going to probably resist even more, especially for me. I know that's how I've operated in the past. Um, when I give my body more to resist um, and try and fight what it what it ideally wants, um, it doesn't go in my favor usually. I just wanted to make a note of that too. Yeah, that's a great point. And uh, like, I think I said this last week, but I can say it every week. When you are on a plan, and that plan is working, especially during the prep, I would say nine times out of 10 with my athletes, the positive changes come from feeding that person up more so than continuing to pull down. Like mm -hmm. metabolic adaptation is a real thing, okay? So if you're not feeding and you're not stimulating your metabolism ever, you can't expect that same level of intake to continue to give you the same results. So if you're stuck and you're you're eating a low plan because Naughty's not eating a lot of food, um, and we don't have a lot to pull from there. I would really encourage you guys to push the food up in a calculated manner. Um, and that's another change. Like I talked about possibly reducing her cardio. I talked about uh, feeding her up. Her current refeed, I'm going to actually probably push that up higher to see if we could stimulate a response out of that versus pulling it back. Um, so again, a lot of this is, is experience based and knowing what to do. But hopefully what you guys can see here is like more isn't always the answer. Um, and that's really with every variable. It's it's not about more, especially with girls. Like I cannot say it enough. Um, just another example of that, like with Ivana, I just made a post about her, but my, this whole year about with her for me has been about navigating her and finding ways to feed her more because our preps up to this point, like to get the result that we wanted. And the thing about um, Ivana is that she's so gifted. So like Honestly, at the end of the day, anybody can get her in shape, but but my responsibility and what I really hold to myself is like being able to keep her longevity in the sport long term so that way we can get in shape with a better result without having to go to the same extremes. Um, so again, it's like it's learning how to navigate these things properly and that's what we're really focusing on here and it's the same thing with Nadia. Like I told her as she goes into her pro career, whether it's in a few months or next year, whenever that is, I know it's going to happen. My goal with her is like when she's competing as a pro in three years to be eating more food than what she's eating now. And if we navigate it right, I know that she can do that. Yeah, absolutely. I think if from prep to prep, um, getting ready from show to show, if you're constantly and consistently eating less and less and having to do more and more cardio each time, um, you need to reevaluate your approach, how much of an off season you're giving yourself. Um, how high you're getting food or how maybe even sloppy you're getting during your off season when you're not getting ready for a contest um, because there it's not necessary for your preps to get harder and harder consecutively every single time um, of course you adapt and you get better at dieting and you get accustomed to lower food if that's the case but um, I, I don't believe it's absolutely necessary to have to pull and pull and pull with every single prep and eat less and less and do more and more cardio um, now, of course, it kind of depends where you're coming from in your off season, but um, like I think we're, I want to rewind to talking about using like the minimal effective dose too. I think on the stairs, my heart rate was like 170, 180 yeah, almost yeah. sometimes. And that's just like a level eight, level nine during my steady state cardio. And um, like I, I told Matt when we first started working together that my last minute or so, I jacked the level up and I take off that last minute so that I can say that I worked as hard as I could on my cardio and didn't leave anything in the tank. And he said, stop doing that. And I said, well, what, what do you mean? Like, I want to finish my cardio session knowing that, you know, I laid it all out there and I delivered more, like I over delivered and I overachieved because that makes me feel good. That makes me feel accomplished. And I don't want to get off there thinking, well, I could have done that last minute at this speed or whatever, but that's not necessarily objective. Like he said, less isn't always more. And now on the treadmill, 
Um, it's not, oh, well, today I do, I feel like doing maybe in the, a less incline or more incline. I like to keep that steady. And my heart rate on there now is about like 145, 150. And now we can, we have the power to play with that because in the event that that's not working or we need to bump cardio up, I can maybe walk a little bit faster at a higher incline, not necessarily even add more minutes at that point, but just, um, put a little bit extra effort into there. So I'm, my heart rate's a little bit higher and that probably will produce a little bit of a change in itself. Um, so just navigating that in the smartest way possible and just evaluating um, your cardio in terms of your recovery and how it's um, balanced and balanced with your training too. Um, because like Matt had mentioned, your training and your performance is a big part of your progress and your weight loss during the contest prep, especially. Yeah. So I think that's, I think that's good for this week. Yeah. Um, so this whole series is going to be on YouTube. So if you guys are watching this on YouTube, whether you're watching it on the Camp Jansen platform or YouTube, we want to also address the questions that you guys have as you're watching this. So please just comment below. Um, we'll be sure to include those because we're going to do this every week all the way up to the show. Hopefully we can do something cool like the weekend of the show as well. So you guys can kind of see the whole process unfold for her. Even though with bikini, I'm going to tell you right now, it's not going to be very exciting. Um, but it's honestly not very exciting with any of my, my athletes, you know, like... <laughs> Whatever works up to those final days is going to continue to work. I'm not going to just change the whole plan just because yeah. it's peak week. Um, so, yeah, so we'll be back eight and a half weeks out. 